Hello! Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Fabled Narrative, and let's get into this. From CBS All Access, Star Trek Universe Panels, SDCC 2020, Comic Con at Home. And, uh, <laughs> oh, they activated the likes and comments. Okay. They didn't do it in the first one hour. That's interesting. Okay. But Gary from Nerdrotic, uh, Gary from Nerdrotic, and Az from Heels Babyface uh, YouTube channel, they did a reaction video for the first 20, 30 minutes of the of the video. And what really got under their nerves as to why they could not finish, while Gary will do an overarching uh, in-depth video about it, we're going to be doing a full-fledged from start to finish reaction. We're going to go through every single thing that they said and everything that they've chosen to keep into the video because this is incredibly edited. You can see some of the jump cuts and some of the conversations between s certain moments. You get to see, like, well, why did that person not uh, stop talking? Well, they cut it out. It's just clunky editing in, in of itself. And I want to thank very much, Gary, for bringing this to my <laughs> to my worldview, to my, to my awareness, because Star Trek is an incredibly woke thing. For anybody out there who has been following it, I'm I'm not necessarily a fan of Star Trek. I never have been, but I've always respected it because it kind of went in tandem with Star Wars. Those two things of like, you know what, we have different fandoms, we have different universes that we love, that we respect, that we cherish. The characters are incredibly different. The universe is incredibly different. How they approach certain things are incredibly different, if not polar opposites. There's a few episodes incredibly uh, with, uh, what, what is it called, Deep Space Nine. There's one episode where one of the main characters is glimpsed, uh, I, I won't spoil much, I won't spoil the ending, but he has glimpses of his future death in like two hours and he throughout the entire i think one hour episode he keeps going into the future of seeing what would kill him and what would kill him and the ending of that kind of peeved me off not because it was a bad show but because of like he did something so heroic but nobody recognized his amazingness it was like come on guys so again star trek has many wonderful characteristics about it but that's old Trek. That is Star Trek. That's not the Star Trek Kurtzman. That's not the Discovery. That's not Picard. That's not what we're going to be coming out with. Um, there's two more. There's uh, there was two more that were going to be coming out. Uh, the Lower Decks. That's a TV series. And the next one they actually are announcing in this video, which I, I don't care about. It's like, ugh, okay. But let's get right into it, because I went on long enough. Let's watch the entire video. I'm going to be pausing it quite often, because CBS has a very... Tr is very... I've, I've, had, I've had conversations with actual other YouTubers who have had issues uploading CBS content because of their copyright overreach. Let's just put, That's the word I'm looking for. Their overreach of the copyright material. So I'm going to be pausing it every 5-10 seconds. Hopefully that'll be enough for it not to be taken down because that would be a whole hell of an, of an argument if, 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 I, if I do 10 seconds and they get rid of the entire video. If it's like 2, 3, or 4 hours long or something. That, oh, I would so blow a hissy fit. I'd probably go out for a walk and then a run and then sprint and like punch the wall and be like <laughs> Anyways, let's get into it. Hi, I'm Dominic Patton, Senior Editor and Chief TV Critic for Deadline Hollywood, and I'm so glad to cool. be back at Comic-Con this year, especially at Comic-Con at Home. He, oh, wait, I have that. No, I don't have that exact same. Okay. So welcome to our Star Trek universe. I think my sister has that star or something like that um, hanging on her wall somewhere in her home. First panel at this year's San Diego Comic-Con at Home. Now, I'm joined here today by Alex Kurtzman. I don't think that's a good thing, but okay. And Heather Caden, who serve as executive producers of the three series that we'll be featuring in today's... The three series? Oh, no, no, the three series of, I think, Discovery, Picard, and then the Lower Decks. I think those are the three series, and they're also going to be announcing the fourth series as well. Star Trek Universe panel. Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Lower Decks, Star Trek Picard. Called it! Hi, Heather and Alex. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Yes. Now, one of the things that we've seen in the past several years is the Star Trek universe is always expanding. Yeah. There's an issue there. Expansion doesn't mean change is that the change that you're making is good, because you can expand a universe. As for an example, I I love a very I love if oh, is that a family thing? 
Nope. I can get back to that later. Um, I am a fan of Kung Fu Panda and Kung Fu Panda 2. I would argue that Kung Fu Panda 2, after seeing Kung Fu Panda 1, is a phenomenal, if not one of the top ten really adult-themed films it, made in a children's cartoon, made in a children's or a family film. It was, it's phenomenal. <laughs> Shrek 2 is, the ex is, is probably even a greater example. Kung Fu Panda 2 is one of my personal favorites, but Shrek 2 is hard to deny how amazing it is built. But then Shrek 3 came out. Ain't bad, but not going to watch it again. <laughs> uh, Shrek 4, Shrek 5. It's like, come on, guys. Y'all are just milking it right now. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with the series. I kind of stopped watching after Shrek 2. And that's kind of the point is, you can keep expanding it, but expansion is not the good part. Expansion is, hey, there's a good story to tell. Let's tell that story. It might take about 5, 10, 20 years to tell it again, but I'd rather, I'd rather wait 20 years and hear and watch a phenomenal film. For ex another example, uh, Samurai Jack. I grew up with that. I think I was 10, 11, 12. I don't know when it first came out. But I grew up with that. I was probably 16 when it first came out. I was younger. And when it when it first came out, I liked it. And then I kept watching it. And then I rewatched it. And I rewatched it. I don't know. It's just it wasn't the best, but I couldn't not watch it. It was just amazing. And then 10 years later, or 12 years later, they came out with the sixth season. The fifth, sin is the fifth season, f season finale, absolute cliffhanger. It was dumb. It was a horrible way to end it off. But the sixth season that they came out with, I kind of have a little bit of a disagreement uh, or gripe of what they should have, could have done, but they didn't ruin the characters. They developed the characters for what was not just unique. It's hard to describe it, really is. How do, how do I describe it? They, they, they did Jack right. It's the best thing that I could ever say is that I'm, I will wait 10 years to watch good film. Expanding something is not a good thing. Well, let me say that. It's not inherently a good thing, but it is natural, which is something that we... Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about what's ahead? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, <laughs> ahead, his head's bald. <laughs> Woo! First of all, Dom, thank you so much for having us, and we're we're very sad not to be at, at Hall H this year uh, with our Star Trek family. Oh, he's so he's so quiet right now. San Diego, but we're really excited that people still get to hear uh, all about it. Yeah, you see that that, that editing that wasn't a natural conversation that just. Uh, it's so it's so edited. Let me ask you this now sure. in the past couple months We have of course heard if you want to be on YouTube It's one of the things of like be comic con at home Something that with on YouTube you'd be I think have a lot more lenience if it was just more natural with anybody saying whatever they wanted But they also have to keep things under wraps, but again, it's more if you're on YouTube That's kind of an issue if you're gonna do a long-form panel with 27 ish plus people you got to have a bit more natural I don't know. The great news about Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Iconic characters Strange coming New back Worlds. with their own series. Give us a sense of where that's at. All right, so... Uh, it, honestly, just, it, just, it just cuts over to the Kurtzman. We heard the fans. Uh, I really wanted to tell everybody about it last Comic-Con. Um, people were poking around and asking questions, and we couldn't say anything. <sighs> yeah, pausing it for copyright. But we were already we were already having real active conversations at that point. Okay, I'm getting exciting. bored with this guy. Um, we're just gonna keep yeah, skipping until so he now, says Heather, something. As we talk about live action Star Trek, and there are, of course are several series, and we're gonna see many of them today. There's also animated Star Trek coming. Heather, can you give us a sense of what we're gonna see in that version of this world? Pausing. Yeah. So in addition to Lower Decks, which we'll talk about a little later, we're you are developing oh show oh a kid's kid show on Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon with talented uh, and that the talented Hageman brothers are wait what kid show you're talking about show running I just I just want to make certain if you're gonna be developing oh, okay now I okay things are gonna be coming together because they they Kurtzman does view his uh Star Trek as his platform to not brainwash but to make act but to you but to do activism politically and that's one big issue that I have with anything. I hate the LGBTQ plus group because of this, because it is inherently a political group. 
because any and all progress, boom, right there, that's word. If you ever hear with LGBTQ and progress, well, what are you progressing? Well, equal rights for all. Equal rights or special rights? I mean, if it's special rights, then you have to make specific laws about certain people. Well, how about if you are an individual or just a citizen of the country? Boom, right there. Regardless of your race, creed, color, nationality, or sex, as long as you are at least American, you have the exact same laws, you, are, you have the exact same rights under the law. You are to be treated, and if you aren't treated, you are not being treated to the standard that is required. So that's, again, that's how I approach it. So if you're a political party that's saying, hey, uh, we just want equal rights. Okay, I don't care about your insert whatever character physical uh, immutable characteristic that just doesn't play a role with whatever you think, feel, speak, or act or behave. Because being gay and being straight has nothing to do with whether or not do you want more taxes. Like, hey, like if you value certain things of like, hey, well, I think that there should be more LGBTQ programs. Okay, should there be more straight programs? Like, that's just the exact same. <laughs> like, so weird. It's so cringe to hear people say, like, I want LGBTQ. To me, that's saying you want more straight programs. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> well, we want things to be fair. No, it sounds like you want special treatment. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but let's stop the murdering. Let's stop the pillaging and plundering. Let's stop stealing things from everybody. And then we're, whoever has whatever, keep it. But you're not going to do it anymore. But we have less. 20 years later, you want to go back to the other person, start pillaging and plundering because you didn't, you got a raw deal 20 years ago. It's like, okay, now stop. And then the other people who got robbed, who had nothing to do with it, who weren't there 20 years ago, are now have been robbed 20 years in the future. They're going to be like, well, we got a raw deal 20 years ago. And they'll look at you and like, because of your insert immutable characteristic, therefore, insert judgment. And like, well, wait a second. If we're going to, like, just stop it. Stop your shit. <laughs> stop your shitty activities, your shitty beliefs. And just here, okay, we'll start now. Now, start it. And if you do it, you're in the wrong. Because <laughs> I didn't do anything in the past, but if I'm being treated because of the things that have happened in the past and I'm only associated because of my immutable characteristics, go fuck yourself. That we're super excited about for kids to have a way into the Star Trek brand. Okay, kids don't need a way into the Star Trek brand. Star Trek and its very nature is very low key. That if, like, you can get a five, ten, seven, ten year old to start watching the original Star Trek. You can. You really can, <laughs> and if anything, do it with El do it with Elmo or Sesame Street, which is somewhat woke. They actually came out with Elmo saying like how amazing Black Lives Matter is and how the protests, including the riots, were a necessary part of society. Like yo, they did they're just they're just doing what they need to do. Oh my gosh! And, and we're officially announcing today that the title of that show will be Star Trek Prodigy. Prodigy. That <laughs> sounds like a porn. <laughs> Star Trek por pornogy. <laughs> Definitely not a kid's show. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. What was that? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> you go boom right there. You go poo. What was it? Poo. <laughs> now, oh, man. About that. Oh man, not really shitting on their tr they're trying to reach out to kids, but their activism is what I really am railing ag railing against here. <laughs> is that hey, well, just for an example, how many people in the cast will vote for Trump? I'm not saying that I do. I'm just saying how many? Because if it's all, let's just say one leaning political party, is that an issue? Is that a problem? Is that a question? Would that same activity, if there was a bunch of conservatives who created a bunch of things, who had one out of a hundred who would vote for, let's just say, Joe Biden, would that not be put into question? Can we not put that into question? I just, just asking the question here. <laughs> uh, Alex, talking about today, what are we going to see today with, with the Star Trek Universe panel that we have at Comic-Con at home? You know what? I have to give him props because he is a pretty good host. Uh, I don't think there's anything about him, him himself other than being in the bubble. Uh, the, the other than his big bald head, <laughs> but uh, I don't really have any issues about that guy. You are going to see um, 
on the Discovery side, a live reading of the finale of season two. Okay. No problem there. Have not watched it. Uh, you are then going to have a brief Q&A. Okay, with this Sarah. guy's kind of boring. You're going to have a Q&A with Mike McMahon and Lower Deck. So you're going to get to meet. Good. So you see, guys, Good. we're delivering a full Star Trek package. I want to go back to what we were just talking about again. Obviously, the okay. coronavirus is keeping us apart from each other this year. Uh, the virus There's is keeping us apart. There's a lot going on in this country and around the world. Right. Sometimes I feel like art can speak to some of those issues, perhaps even more than politics can, specifically when we talk about Star Trek. He brought up politics, inclusion, diversity, outreach. <laughs> oh, again, how in, how inclusive is verse uh, how inclusive if you were to compare something of I don't care about your fucking skin color versus another person who says what is your skin color? Well, what does that have anything to do with what I think, feel, or speak or act as? Because if I think, feel, speak, or act as one person, are you going to judge me differently if I'm a different person? If I say, hey, you should probably get your shit together. Okay, well, what if a woman said that? Hey, you should probably get your shit together. Well, listen to, hey, you should probably get your shit together. It's like, wow, okay, that's a pretty good message. <laughs> Regardless of who said it. <laughs> like, again, inclusion, diversity, outreach, go fuck yourself. All those words are... All those words make you feel happy. All those words are things that if you attack it, it's like, oh my gosh, they're just precious puppies or something. You don't attack it. You don't challenge it. It's just, why would you be against inclusion, diversity, or outreach? I don't care about your fucking skin color. I don't care about your sex. I don't care about your gender. How you think or feel yourself to be? I'd ra I have more in common with an atheistic trans person. or uh, I was going to need a little bit more religious or... Uh, no, no, spiritual. That was, that was the specific word I was going to go for. But let's do something a little bit more basic. I have more in common with a trans woman who knows themselves to be biologically male, who, who, who feels like they are specifically a woman, than a man who thinks that if you want to identify as a woman, that makes you biologically a woman. I have more in common just from that not because of your identity, but because of how you think, but because of what you believe to be true. I can have a disagreement with, uh, with the, if I can have a disagreement with a trans woman and be like, well, I agree with this, I disagree with that, but I, I don't care. Like at the end of the day, I don't care. You, le you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone, you get to do whatever you want, I get to do whatever I want. We wipe our hands clean and walk away. Or we'll just join hands and go together because we love Star Trek or Star Wars or certain episodes or even going to certain fandoms. It's like, well, oh, you like Kung Fu Panda 1? Well, I like Kung Fu Panda 2. Kung Fu Panda 2 is stupid. Wait, let's see the end. Kung Fu Panda 2 is stupid. Whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 what? You're wrong! And we can have a disagreement and argue and be like, oh, you're so stupid for thinking that. Is it because I'm a trans woman? It is now! <laughs> it's like, again, inclusion, diversity, and outreach are all bullshit words. If you don't care, like, I, I don't care. Star Trek, inclusion, diversity, outreach. I wanted to know what you guys think about the message of Star Trek in the American... Ah, uh, there we go. The message of Star Trek. What about the message of Star Wars? Uh, the message of Star Wars should be the story of Star Wars, like whatever is in that world. The story of John Wick, I hated John Wick 3. Uh, there were some good things in it, but I, I, I just don't like it. Um, they, they played on too... It, it went too long in some places... I just don't like start. I don't like John Wick three. I love John Wick two. I think John Wick two was an A plus. I th I'd give uh, John Wick one maybe a B plus, not a B minus, but a B plus at least, and then a A minus at most. So it's like it's not perfect. It's not great, but it's fucking solid. It is just solid all the way through. <laughs> it doesn't have any hiccups from what I from what I've seen. Maybe one one or two spots with the guy who got killed in it. Uh, the guy who saved John Wick a few times. But, spoiler warning. <laughs> spoiler alert! <laughs> uh, but, the message of a show should be whatever story you're telling in that show. John Wick 2 was about John Wick trying to um, get revenge. It was a revenge story. John Wick 1 was a revenge story. John Wick 2 was a different revenge story, but it was very thematic with based off... Yeah, the first one, the story, the, the 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 universe that was created, it didn't have anything to do with social norms. 
it was just whatever was in the in the show it was ever in the movie but if you're thinking that well star trek is supposed to represent certain things yeah what is in the movie what is in the show is the is what's being shown good i hated john wick 3 i i was looking forward to it i was so happy and anticipating it i watched the trailer like four or five ten twenty times but then i watched it i was just like eh. same with star trek it's like is star trek good that's the whole point that's the whole message that matters erica and in the world that we're living in today I think we're all so proud I'm to so, be so, working on so a show stunning, that so proud. has a message that really matters. The message that matters should be what resonates in the show. Again, John Wick, I don't want to be John Wick. John Wick is a murderer. He kills people. But I can identify with him because he goes through some challenges. That's not too hard to grasp. Apparently, for the Star Trek people, producers, it's like, well, ah, Kung Fu Panda 2. Mm-hmm. I hate Kung Fu Panda 3 with a passion because I because they set something up in Kung Fu Panda 2 where Tigress was being questioned by uh, Poe, the panda main character, about how she got so strong and powerful and she just punched the ironwood trees outside the palace for 20 years. That's the reason she got strong. That's the reason she, she's so legitimately, from what they said, verbatim hardcore. Hardcore. But they didn't do anything with that. That sucked. I wanted more of that. What I would have loved to see, and something I guess in my anticipation of what I was expecting, was I would have loved to see Kung Fu Panda 3, maybe even bring in the family... I'm doing a lot of spoilers here, but it's been out for a while, so it's... <laughs> folly, on who, folly on me, anyways. Where in Kung Fu Panda 3, they, they bring in the family of Poe. But it's not just about Poe. Have it with Tigress... Her, her family or where she came from, they, uh, maybe from the, the, uh, the, the mother or father or whoever gave her up as, the, or as an orphan, we get to see why they did. Or maybe she's the, she has the spirit of the dragon within her, the dragon warrior. Well, the reason that she probably felt like she, she needed it or something, maybe, maybe something like that. Maybe you, they actually confront a real dragon. And the dragon is not necessarily... Maybe there's a good and a bad dragon. You can see them in like red and blue, black and white. And maybe there's... But they, they're always in contrasting colors through the entire show. But you never get to understand like who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. Until, or maybe, maybe, I don't know. It's just like you could do something more with Tigress. But she got sidelined. They set it up gone it's just yeah so what resonates is what's within the characters i don't care if it resonates within the real world if you think that you need to go into the fake world to live the real world got a problem buddy you got a problem you need to wake up i mean i'm not saying that i don't do that i i, I dive into a game and not even look up at the clock until about three four five twenty ten hours well legitimately about four hours later and be like oh i gotta eat something or I gotta poop. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't. I forgot. I I was in my body. Oh, okay. This this thing needs to be man ma maintenance uh, managed every once in a while. And really resonates. I think anyone who does what they do on this side of the camera, on the other side of the camera, is hoping to say something. And I think what's great when you're working on genre is you often get to say things. She's not saying anything about current events and mask them so they don't feel like medicine or that you're being taught something. But the objective of what you're doing is trying to teach something. That's that's where I'm here. That's that's what I'm listening. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> and I think in the case of Star Trek, thematically, it's just been baked into what Star Trek is about a better hope, about equality. Ah, uh, wasn't Star Trek always about equality and gender equality? And well, wait, if okay, if you want equality, gender equality does not need to be stated. Okay, just saying that. It's either it's about equality, every and, and more importantly, it's not about e equality, because we're not all equal. There's people in the shows of Star Trek who are good, who are bad, who are smart, who are dumb. Who are wise? Who are retarded? These things matter, but it's not about your... A woman walks in onto the uh, Starfleet Command. Okay? What rank is she? 
why should she why should why should she be talking about it? It's not, oh, why should she be talking about the emphasis of her sex or gender sits her sex. But why is she speaking? Is it because she has something to say? Is it because she because uh, the, the, the commander is wrong? And if the commander is wrong, you shouldn't be doing it on the, uh, the, the deck unless there is an important thing. Um, like you're in the midst of battle. If you're in the midst of battle, you shouldn't be going against your commander anyways. That's what matters. The equality part is not focusing on the fucking sex. Oh, well, gender equality. They did that. They, 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 it's done. Gender equality has already been dealt with. So, again, making it about sex, you making it about sex, gender equality, you, you focus so much more on the gender aspect rather than the equality aspect. That's just how I see it. The gender equality, racial equality, sexual equality. Again, all equalities. There's no reason to say those things because you mentioned equality. I mean, it's, it's what it is. And you know, we've seen in the past few weeks that you guys that we've seen on the Star I've Trek seen this guy from somewhere, I don't remember. Hashtag Star Trek United. Alex, can you Why Star Trek United? Why not Star Trek Universe? <laughs> like, Star Trek Universe, Star Trek, uh, okay. Can you give us a sense about what that is telling us? Oh, I so re Okay, I remember in uh, one of the panels, uh, one of the discussions with, uh, like, the nine people there, or 12 people there were on the... Uh, the screen one of them was saying like oh we need to make this hashtag go viral make it go viral and it's like st Twitter is a cesspool don't don't do Twitter if you're out there who do who does Twitter I I'm sorry I did Twitter at one point but then I couldn't I was having an argument with somebody and only until actually it was like maybe two people two three people but I was having an argument with somebody and the only moment in which they were starting to listen to me in my argument was when I said I was gay. They, they called me homophobic, and I said I was gay. And from then, they said that they were sorry, they let me talk, because we were going at it, like we were going at that argument. We were posting, 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 and the moment that he called me homophobic, I dropped the, oh, I'm gay. It's like, okay, because that's, that, that's the way you communicate with SJWs. Here's my identity, now I'm allowed to speak. So that's why I think that SJW is a legitimate virus. It makes people weak. It, it breaks people down. It spreads, infects, and multiplies. So if if you know SJWs, please pray for them. Please think of them. Please hope and hope for the best for them. But the ideology is what's a virus. They are not a virus. They are the result of the virus. The virus is the ideology because if you change that ideology, you change the person because it's not who you are. You're, it's not who you think. It's not your physical characteristics or what you think about those things. It, it's, it's not your physical characteristics, it's what you think about that thing. It's the inside that matters. Oh man, I thought we already dealt with this like 30, 40, 50 years ago, but apparently who, who, people who are bringing it up are <gasps> people on the extreme left and people who are normalizing it on the slightly left who are just accepting of like, well, don't bother them because they're just a small portion or I don't think of it's that bad, but they don't really know what the topic is all about. It's like, why are you against equal? Like, why are you against sexual e equality? It's like, I'm not. I just think that if you're going to say equality, that goes across the boards that what's matter is your merit. <laughs> it's like <gasps> merit is is evil and racist and cis-normative. Star Trek, really, since its inception, has always um, its endeavored to speak to the vision that... Uh, Gosh, what? Well, Alex Kurtzman is so day. boring to listen to. <laughs> Star Trek United is the effort of bringing awareness to many of the... Organ I'm just going to read whatever he says because what he has to... How he says things is just boring. <laughs> to many of the organizations that are now... Cr that are crit Oh, wait, wait, wait is uh, the effort of bringing awareness to many of the organizations that are critical right now, Black Lives Matter, the NAACP. Oh my gosh, okay. Those are political activist groups. They, they really are. If you, if, you, if, you are being, if you are called a Nazi enough, the NAACP will come after you and label you as such because, oh, everybody's calling you, therefore you are. Black Lives Matter. Well, what about, I, I don't care for this, but I'm just using the argument. Why not White Lives Matter? That's not what Black Lives Matter is about. Okay, well, let's use the exact same example, but in reverse. Make America great again. <gasps> America was never great. Oh, what? <laughs> you mean when we signed the independence that, you, again, and then throughout the years, we, we, we allow... Uh, you have a standard of equality under the Bill of Rights that was created by 
men, by, by a lot of white men to create equal rights under the law. And then we've kept expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding that. And a lot of people agree, a, a lot of people just accepted that you have a different political system than I. Well, cool, it doesn't matter. We'll go out for a beer. We'll vote for however we vote. But at the end of the day, we're still Americans. People don't believe that on the left. We're not Americans because America is inherently racist. And if I believe that I'm, I, I love America, racist. So again, make America great again, the activities of what that means, versus, well, America was never great again. Well, you're, you're using the, just the term, the words, rather than actually understanding the meaning, which is the exact same activity of somebody saying, hey, white lives matter. It's not about white lives. Okay, make America great again. America was never great. It's the exact same activity. It really is. CP, uh, a lot of our cast speaking to that, Star Trek speaking to it. Again, a lot of a lot of people are just extreme lefts, and I think they're just in an echo chamber. If you if you don't know if you don't know where your poop goes, if you don't know who handles your poop or how your poop is handled after you flush it down the drain, you are wealthy compared to the rest of the planet. You are rich beyond measure compared to everybody else who has ever lived. So again, it's like, oh my gosh, my life is not good. I'm struggling with money. Oh my gosh, I have money? Well, oh, there's a lot of people in the world who would love to have this money. Boom, shift the change, shift the thought, shift your focus, bam, that's how it works. It's like, it doesn't get rid of the problem, but it helps you deal with the problem in a different light, hopefully a better one. Um. The goal is not really to... The vote. goal is not Star Trek. Are you fucking kidding yeah, me? To that, Star oh, Trek let's watch that again. The goal is not really to promote Star Trek. Oh, look at his face. It's such a retarded face. I'm going to punch... That's a punchable face. I'd take off the glasses and then punch him in the eye. And then punch him in the other eye. Put the glasses are on him and then punch his face. The goal is not Star Trek? <laughs> like, what? Um... The goal is not really to promote Star Trek, but to promote these organizations. It is, it is, again, Star Trek is about promoting political ideologies, pro promoting certain political belief systems, because, uh, again, I disagree with Black Lives Matter. Oh, <gasps> you hate black people. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, you mean the rioting that's happened because George, George Floyd, who died in a very ho horrible way. I, there's no other way of saying that. He died in a very ill-mannered way saying it even the lightest you possibly can. What are people writing about? Look, a band, like, let's, let's not just, de let's not just um, have uh, change within the police or systematic sh change or a reforming, but instead let's get rid of or defund the police. Oh, well, okay, defunding the police doesn't change that. It just removes, it removes the problem for an even worse problem. So, again, if you're not, if you don't want the police, don't police the law. So if I go around, if you, if, if, again, if the police were um, defunded, if the police were cast out and saying, no more police, we ban the police like they did in Minneapolis. If I go outside and I break the law, you can't stop me because that would be enforcing with a police system and structure. Well, no, no, my police system, me policing it is okay, but those guys are naughty pants. Okie dokie. <laughs> Fucking retards. Organizations and to use our platform to be able to Our platform. It our platform to promote political ideologies. Or political movements. We are an activist. We are activism in a nutshell. I could probably stop it right here. The entire video is premised on this. So you know what? I'm gonna pause it, make this into a sole video for 33 minutes, and then we'll continue watching the entire thing. So <laughs> Oh my gosh, I might even just make a shorter video of doing that. So I'm going to I'm going to do that right now.